the main tab in battery has a lot of the features that you want to be able to get to really quickly to manipulate the sound of a sample inside a cell. So whenever you click on a sample or a cell, and we've got the main tab loaded up, you'll see this information here in the main tab. The first thing I see is this waveform display. So when I play the note or trigger the sample, there we go, you'll see the playhead kind of scroll through there. And even in just this waveform display, the rudimentary one, without opening the editor, we can do some quick non-destructive editing like change the starting and ending points of the sample. So if we want no decay on it, like that, or just we adjust the start point. Now, if we happen to be in the Kip browser or something like that, and let's say we want to immediately open this sample up in the browser, you can tap on this little folder, Find in Library, and it will find the snare you're looking for in the library on the left side. So right there. There it is. It just pops up. You can cycle through the neighboring samples, and if you look at the cell, the cell changes as I change samples. So we're back to our, you know, Wickinger kit snare again. There we go. Over here we've got a few different things. We can reverse the sample one click. So really great for making some alternative styles. You can quickly reverse symbols, reverse samples of anything non-destructively. Tune it. And that engine is really high quality engine. You know, it keeps all the transients, all the audio data in there while you're tuning it. it. lets you really stretch it really far. And that's without even going into the editor. This is all non-destructive, just quick access stuff. Phase reversing, swapping left and right channels. We can pan the sound. So each individual cell can be panned to be exactly how you like it. And of course, the level of the individual cell. So you got your master volume up here, but this is the level of how loud that cell, that sample is. So if you want to balance it with all the rest of the sounds in your kit, you can do that by adjusting the sample volume right there. And again, it's not doing anything destructive. We're just sort of changing it, you know, temporarily. The key range is what note on your MIDI device will trigger it. You can enter it in manually. So you can have a whole bunch of notes triggering the same sample if you want. So if you have one snare sample and you want to be able to do some quick rolls and you don't want to use the same key, you can map it to a bunch of notes. Or rather than doing it manually, you can click on this little MIDI Learn button and just hit the button that you want to trigger it, and you're good. And you hit a starting note and an ending note. So if I want these notes up here to trigger it, which are now noisy kind of things, and I'll click on this, I'll click on a bottom note, and then a top note. And now, everywhere from A4 to C5 is going to trigger my snare and the stuff it was already triggered to. So if I want to get rid of it, if I don't want it to trigger that synth, I can either just mute that synth or a better thing to do would be to just, you know, take the key range way out of where it is. So now that note is only triggering my snare. And I'd have to do it with all the rest of them too. So there's your, your key range. Let's go back down to the E that it was on. So it's there for us. There we go. The volume envelope. I love that they let you have a complex or simple volume envelope. So you've got your attack, hold, decay, sustain, release. Or if you want to just deal with the attack, hold, and decay, you can do that too. So right now, it's not active. I can turn it on and see the volume envelope. I can change the attack. get that percussive attack, but then kind of move it to change it around. So a lot of flexibility with your volume envelope. If you don't need all the controls, you can just switch to your standard attack, hold, and decay. Pitch envelope. This is a lot of fun, too, because now you can actually have it follow a pre-written pitch envelope. So right now, if you look, it's going to go down and back up again. The pitch is actually going to start higher than its normal playing area, dip way down below, and then back up again. And you hear that kind of going, 
Did you like that? That was pretty good, right? <laughs> so we can adjust the amount to make it a little more usable. Adjust when it does it. And just like the volume envelope, you can use a simple pitch envelope as well. So a really cool creative tool, and again, non-destructive. You can just turn it on or off. And then later on, if you want to save processing power, just like with all of these things, you could always render the cell. We've got a velocity area where you can scale the velocity. So if you don't want the velocity sensitivity that you have, I could play it quiet now to louder because I've got 100%, but if I turn it off, even if I barely touch the note, it's triggering at 100% volume. So you can scale the amount of velocity sensitivity, and you can even have the velocity affecting the pitch by as many semitones as you want. So if I play soft, and I'll play softer to louder so you can hear it. So as my velocity changes, so does the pitch by however many semitones I trigger it to do. You've got your engine. Um, this is where you can switch from sampler to sort of granular and stretching and stuff. We'll get a little more involved in that later on. But for right now, we'll leave it on standard. You can select some vintage samplers to you know hear how that audio engine would have processed it. You've got a direct from disk mode if you want to save some RAM. So streaming it directly off the disk versus loading it into RAM. Uh, not something I need to consider really with just one cell, but if that cell is a particularly RAM intensive sample and you're running low on resources, it's handy to know how to do. Your filter area, you've got a high cut and a low cut filter. And again, to save space, they kind of got them just right in the same spot there. So you can instantly hear how that affects your sound. And if you want to be able to do that on the fly, you can map all of this stuff. Later on, we can talk about how you can MIDI map all of these controls to different controllers that you're going to use. So just a quick right click or even map them to automated stuff like an LFO or something like that. You've got a one knob compressor. So if you don't want to use the other compression engine under the effects, you've just got a quick, simple, easy to use one knob compressor very very handy very nice and of course you've got sends to your master delay and master reverb so I can send it to my master reverb and to the master delay so all of this is on a per cell basis the mass the main tab if I make some changes here you know with the compressor and filters and the sends if I go to this other cell they're not there so this is all on a per cell basis to allow you to really manipulate and dig down and change every aspect of every sample that you're using in that particular kit. So that's the main tab. And coming up in the tutorial, we'll take a look at the effects tab.